this cross grab, it's the same thing. We're gonna go towards, grab hard. So if I try to get free, I can't pull arm free. But to get free, I'm gonna go towards the thumb in a circle. But I'm also gonna go in a superior, I'm gonna put myself in a superior position, meaning I'm not gonna to go to zero. So I don't wanna go like this, and then find out he's a boxer and then get punched real fast. So when I get free from here, I'm gonna turn it over, but I'm also gonna get in control. And from here, we have options. So we can take him into coach roll further. If we felt like our life's in danger, even from here, we would go right here to the eyes, then go to the throat. If we didn't have time to grab, then we go here, strike the eyes, <laughs> or strike the throat, and then keep moving. So the escape, though, would still stay the same. We escape, but into a superior position. Because again, we don't want to go into that like a zero, and then find out he's a really good fighter, <laughs> right? So you're changing the relationship here, and then here you're either going to eyes or throat, and if you don't want to hurt him, you want to control, you're gonna to go to the other direction, which is towards the pinky, over and down. <laughs> when they touch your shoulder, one, and take your hand over top, slow. Two, yeah, that's it. Just one, two. So the hands up, one, two. Oh, yeah. That's so good. this can be done by not touching the face at all, just dropping your hand down, right? Now I'm standing up, don't, don't go down. This actually doesn't hurt. This actually hurts more. Yeah. You can use your hand to <laughs> touch them or touch them or if you don't want to touch them you just take your hand straight over the top and just drop it down Damn. go trick your notch push down here <laughs> <laughs> don't grab them <laughs> I, I believe you <laughs> <laughs> You know what? You're not striking. All you're doing, guys, you can strike, but you don't need to. All you do is put your fingers here on the bone right above the, where there's a the groove. That's your trachea notch. And you're going to hook down to the right. By hooking down to the right. All right. What did you think about your training today? It was really amazing. It was really good. I really liked it. Okay. And how'd you hear about us? A friend. A friend of me. Thank you. <laughs> this guy off my family member, my friend, whatever this is, I don't want to hurt them. I take my fingers right here above the eyes. Grab hard. Don't let go. We'll come here. So their eyes are not injured, and we want to make them back away. We want to drop them, but we don't want to hurt them. We go here, fingers here, right under the eyes, not to the eyes. The bones are here, the orbits. We're going to hook our fingers inside the orbits. Oh, God. Both. Let go. Come here. <laughs> so the harder they grab, the more energy goes into the eye sockets, but you're still not aiming for the eyes yet. The eyes you only use if your life's in danger. So you're gonna, you hook the orbits above the eyes. That's where all your pressure goes, up there. But if your life's in danger, you scoop the eye out of the socket so they can let you and your family go. Around behind you. Okay, I missed that. So right here, the guy's right here, can be in front of you, the side of you. Right here, you wanna move him? Come here. <laughs> you're turning the temple. It gives you right in front of you. <laughs> All right, what'd you think about your training today? Oh, wonderful class. Uh, you know, everything's very useful, things that you can use if you have the chance to, which hopefully you don't, but everything was great. You know, stuff is real. It hurts. You know, I got ice up when I go home now. What was your biggest takeaway from the training? Mm, to, to just never give up. Like, when, when you're doing certain moves or you're training something and it's not really going your way, you make a mistake, just continue through it. Same thing in like a life or death scenario. It's the same thing, you know, if, if things aren't going your way, maybe you get shot, maybe you don't, just keep fighting, trying to survive, you know? And what's your background? Um, as in what? Like, in uh, training. Uh, I've been doing uh, jujitsu for the last two years. I was doing boxing for a little bit, um, kickboxing for the same two years. So just all around M uh, MMA. Thank you very much. Thank you. Vortex! <laughs> Person is blocking you. You're blocking your path. You're trying to go forward. You can go here if you wanted to move here. If you wanted to move the other way, put your hand here. Lean forward. You're not. You're not literally moving them. You're using your body to create a fulcrum on the elbow. The elbow is what's moving him. And he's standing stable and solid right now. So, the other option is to take the hand here, step under, and stand up. And now you walk the person up. There you go. I'm up. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
No, sir. Yeah, it's not And that's just a push. Give it to him first. All you're doing is it, let it just pushing here. Yo, yeah, going good? And so, <laughs> hey, it was on hard. My, my tongue was hurt. <laughs> I was going to say something, but I couldn't. So, yeah. Yeah, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> going slow, going slow, Mr. Jay, slow now. So your hands go out here, and you're going to grab here. If you can't grab that, it doesn't matter. Take all of your force and push it into the eye sockets. You don't, don't try to um, grab the nose. Okay, you're not grabbing the nose. You're pushing your fingers into the eye sockets. So the harder he grabs, the more force goes in. The tear ducts. Yeah. yeah, you're actually putting all the pressure into the bone area here. And if he goes really hard, the finger will slip behind the eye and the eye will then will, can come out either this way or this way. Here to get some air, keep some air flowing. You're not gonna get free, strong person. We assume he's choking you to hard. Yep. And he was grabbing hard. So this guy is stronger than most people. It doesn't, it has nothing to do with strength. Now, if your life's in danger, you're not gonna go there, you're gonna go here. To the eye, hooking the eye down. And another option you have is it's super serious. You're gonna grab the groin, rip the face back, lift, and elevate them onto their skull. So I'm gonna hit you hard. To keep that from happening, make your arms stiff and go straight through. He's gonna go fast. He's gonna go fast and hard, right towards my head. The energy is going past me. I'm not trying to block it. So it doesn't matter how strong it is or how weak I am compared to him. My arm's going to go here, the energy's coming through. We're going to let the energy go past us. Our head is no longer where it was because our head's coming forward. At the same time, we're going through their skull and taking our fingers through their face, through their eyes, and smashing their skull down into the car wall or ground. Now, even if you are a smaller guy by 100 or 200 pounds or a female to a man, the fingers going through the skull, through the eyes, is going to drive them back. And you're not going to them, you're going through them. So you can be a guy 100 pounds, he can be 300 pounds. A 300 pound guy, when they come to attack you, they come to you, they don't stay up there. You go to them, they'll be here. If you're much smaller, you're gonna go straight through and smash the skull down into the car, the wall, the ground behind them. See what you guys think of your training with Detroit Urban Survival Training. Thank you very much. Pull the thumb in. Second one, take your hand, your palm of your hand, right on the side of the blade. You're going to press down towards the guard, just like that. What you're doing is you're grabbing. With your palm, you're grabbing the, with the pads of your fingers, grabbing on the sides. There's actually nothing touching the sharp edges. But even if you cut your hand during a knife attack situation, you're still in much better place than letting them continue to stab you or someone else. So don't worry about getting cut because someone's going to cut you if their job, if they believe they want to kill you with this knife, you should expect to get cut, number one. All right, from firing, three ways, one, Pushing the slide to the rear in any way, shape, fashion, or form. And, and, you know, this is not ideal. You don't want to push them in the front because you're increasing likelihood of getting shot in the first place. But sometimes what happens when you're fighting is your body would actually be here because the criminal is using the weapon to punch and shoot at the same time, which is a common occurrence. Because when you think about attacking, it's not target shooting. It's not um, sport shooting. Uh, when someone has a gun and they have intention to hurt someone, they often use it the same way they do a fist. So they actually punch as they shoot. Uh, this is a common occurrence for people that are using a gun in a primal way to kill other people. Um, so these people will use the gun, they will put it on your person. The reason why they put the gun to your person is to give you terror, to give control of them over you, and to ensure that uh, if they did shoot you 100%, you're gonna get shot. So one of the reasons why they put the, body, the gun to the person is to make them uh, highly compliant and because here they know they're so close to you, there's no way they believe you can get away from them. This also gives them maximum control and makes, it makes them feel maximum in power and control over you. This gives them a sense of empowerment. When they're here, even if you're crying at a distance or begging, they don't feel the, the, the actual feeling they want to feel as a person in power, as a predator. They want to be so close 
that they feel as uh, your pain. They can actually sense it in you. The reason they put it here is they want to see the pain in your face. This makes them feel empowered. So this person might not feel um, very strong normally, but right now you may have a PhD, you may have a big car, a big house, a nice car, but they are in charge of you. This person now feels more powerful than anything in your world. Nine out of 10 people are gonna begin crying right now and begging this boy, this girl, this uh, person. They are going to beg. And that person that's the predator is now feeling like they're a god. They decide whether you live or die. And they're not gonna replace that feeling for your logical feeling as a good person. Pistol firing, one, is taking out a battery. Anytime it slides to the rear, it cannot fire, pull the trigger. Uh, and anytime that you have it in this position, pull the trigger, it will fire. And if you want to stop firing and it has a hammer, then you're going to block the hammer down. Or if the hammer was forward, you block it forward and it still can't fire. If it has no hammer, like locks, uh, that means that it's a striker fired. What that means, you want to just only focus on one thing, which is pushing the slide to the rear. Anytime it's out of battery, it cannot fire. To control the movement of a, any pistol, you simply grab the end of the barrel here. Anything in the frame and barrel area here, not here. This is where people think they can control the weapon. You can't. Not only can the person be strong with you, but they also can just pull the gun back and they can actually realign the barrel with you. This happens a lot. People, with, whether police officers or civilians, they're fighting over a gun, so they grab here. Because it seems like if I grab the hand, that I can control the gun. That's not true. You have to grab the barrel of the weapon and you grab the front and back. And if you only grab the front, that's fine. But grabbing the back will give you very little control. So grabbing the front, front of the a weapon gives you the control. You can strip it from people. Uh, you can redirect it. You can even push the gun, push the whole, put, put two hands on the gun, push the gun towards me. And this guy's strong, he still cannot control the weapon. So it has nothing to do with that. It's leverage. It's biomechanics and the way the human hand works. So from here, I can control and restrict the movement of the weapon, even with one finger. So when you put your entire hand there, you are restricting the movement of the weapon. If there was a bullet in the chamber right now, and you pull the trigger, pull the trigger this right here would inhibit any other rounds from coming out. So right now, one bullet would come out and no other bullets would come out until he re-racks the weapon. And right now he could have all kinds of jams because my hand was blocking the ejection port. That means that the, whatever was in there, with, with the shell that, came, that was supposed to get ejected couldn't, so it's probably jammed in there. Uh, but you just now made this weapon inert. It cannot fire until they reload it. They have to cock the weapon and get whatever's blocked in here out of there, whatever shell's in there, and then push it forward again to get it to fire. You're not gonna let that happen because you're gonna save your life by stopping that from happening. So worst case scenario, you grab the weapon and it fires. As long as you're holding tightly, you can inhibit it from firing again. The best thing you do is to push the slide to the rear. But notice, even a small amount of it to the rear, pull the trigger, it disengages the trigger. There's a safety feature on all, on all semi-automatic pistols. Something, some old person, some uh, you know person having mental problems, dementia, um, you don't wanna hurt them, right? So you go to the nose, gun goes down, nose goes back. If it's more serious, lives are in danger, you're gonna hook the eye, pull the gun hard, hold tight, hold tight. Yep, hold, you're gonna put all the pressure here on the eye and it's gonna strip and rip the weapon from their hands. And you're gonna go right there.